always been interested in education. My father had always said there, that there was nothing he would rather have done than teach. And I thought, that's a pretty great thing to say about your work. And I really felt that I'd like to find something like that, that, that I would feel as passionate about. I went out for lunch with Richard Wernham and we were talking about charities and our conversation soon turned to a school. And he talked about the idea that he and Julia had had and my, I said, my dad and I have talked about the exact same thing. It, it should be about developing character. And yes, you, you need to learn some skills along the way too, but wouldn't it be wonderful if a school could be organized along that principle? So they went uh, and they had a meeting with, uh, with John Latimer, who uh, asked a lot of interesting and pertinent questions. And I remember going back, right after I called my dad, I called my dad and said, Chief, we just, I just had the most amazing conversation with Richard Worm about starting a school. said, you know, that's remarkable because my father and I have had exactly the same thought. And we even have a name for it. It's called Greenwood. Well, we'd like the name Greenwood. That was my dad's mom's maiden name. So my grandmother's maiden name was Greenwood. My hope was that we could open the school's doors in the fall of 2002. So uh, uh, a few folks said very gently that maybe that was a little optimistic. I was having lunch with a good buddy of mine, Brett, up at the Longest Yard still some of the great pub food in the city. However, by that stage, we had found um, this UNICEF building at the corner of Davisville in Mount Pleasant. Anyway, we're up there having lunch, and he goes, man, they're selling the building. UNICEF is selling the building. Because of the zoning, it would be very easy to build a structure over the entire site. Do you mind if I call Richard? I mentioned the idea we talked about. So he called Barry, his real estate agent, and the rest is history. Three of us would go away, compile our own list, and I remember we went back in and we mentioned a couple others, and at the top of all three of our lists, separately, was David Thompson. And I turned to my wife and I said, well, I just got this phone call from Richard Warnham, and I have like no idea what this is all about. And so we all came back, and I remember in the living room, DT, DT, David Thompson. And so, you know, interviewed and that was pretty much that. And so I went to go and see Doug Blakey, who was the head of Upper Canada College at the time. And I said, Doug, you know, I, um, you know, I've decided I'm going to take this position. And he just said, you know, damn. And he said, you know, because he was the one, he was one of the ones who had recommended to Richard my name. Well, DT, he's a neat guy because I think uh, he comes across very, in some ways, he's very professional. And in other ways, he's quite informal. So hiring me out of a pizza shop and, you know, every day his tie is up to the top button and, um, so he's, he's a family man and he, I think, felt like he was helping build a family at Greenland. And I remember K-Wave was our assistant director of Kilku. He was the very first hire we had. At the time I was teaching in public school. I remember um, going and having an interview with Richard in his living room. And we talked about school and, and the philosophy of education and, and, you know, at the end of it he said, would you, know, would you be interested in, in sort of coming on board and, and helping with this process? And, uh, and it was a great opportunity. The first year we had 72 students and 72 families of clearly pioneering spirit. We had almost 250 applications in the first year and we didn't have a building, didn't have a staff member hired, we just had a vision and it was a pretty powerful one at that. My name is Kyle Morris and I started in the very first year of Greenwood, 2002. I was standing out there and I see Kyle and I come up and give him a bit, you know, give him a hug and say hello and I'm like, Kyle, it's so good to see you and I'm like, hold on a second. I didn't even know what I'm supposed to be called, so I went running back into uh, Mr. Thompson's office. I go, DT, what am I supposed to do? Am I in love? You know, like everybody else, you should be called Mr. Latimer, and I thought, you know, that somehow just doesn't work. So I said, love, just call yourself love. So I went running back out, and I go, Kyle, it's love. Welcome to Greenwood. You're the first kid through the doors. When the fire marshals came in about uh, a week before and said, you know, this isn't going to happen, we're not going to be ready to go. So that's where the f first week at Koku became two weeks at Koku. 
and uh, our first staff meeting uh, prior to leaving for Kilkoon, we were wearing hard hats and, and uh, we had our first staff meeting, it was pretty funny. Our school attracts a certain uh, type of student that enjoys being active and enjoys being a part of a team and is willing to take risks. We have amazing teachers that are also amazing coaches and so they're very welcoming and they make it a safe environment to students to try out that maybe in their previous schools would be too afraid. Before we were in the Conference of Independent Schools Athletic Associations, we were playing in the Toronto Catholic School Board Athletic Association. First banner we ever won was actually junior boys volleyball. It was like their first opportunity to play in a league. Um, a lot of, or half the team had already been in the school for a year and hadn't had the opportunity to play within organized sports because we weren't in any leagues yet. Um, so I think it was something that they were you know, super proud of because it was the first banner ever. I was the school's first director of academics and again essentially it was uh, kind of making sure that uh, the program that we had at the time, grade 7 to 10, uh, you know, had a strong academic program to complement the existing you know, outdoor ed program that was in place and the community service program. I also was teaching English. We made the decision to again to try and um, enhance the, the academic program to offer perhaps uh, a little more challenge than might be there you know, in our uh, our regular ENG4U program, the grade 12 English, we decided to offer our first uh, AP course, and in this case it was in language and literature. When we first introduced the Grizzly, for example, that was like a shining moment for me. We didn't have a Greenwood uh, Grizzly mascot yet, so we used one of Love's like bear rugs. <laughs> And we just like draped it over our heads and we'd be like the grizzly, like with this big bear rug over us. I remember when we introduced to the school, like the new grizzly, like that was a big moment because, you know, the school we finally had a mascot. We we're finally in the CSAA. It was like, you know, all right, we've got an athletics program now. Wait, my makeup okay? Hi, my name is Lisa West and I'm the arts coordinator for Greenwood College. In 2009, we moved our senior production off site for the first time to the Georgia Nadia Theater. Hi, my name is Julia Schultz and I was involved in Seven Stories at the George Ignatieff Theatre. Well, the George Ignatieff Theatre has been a wonderful partnership for us because they provide a wonderful staff that works closely with our students. I think the performances are probably better as a result because there's this sort of attitude of like, this is it, this is important. Such as their lighting system, their sound system. And our students actually call the show, so they wouldn't necessarily have that opportunity um, if we were to do the show at Greenwood because we don't have the same exposure to such um, new elements. The new Arts House has allowed us to really help to solidify our arts community within Greenwood. It becomes a lot more of a flexible space as well because now we have multiple classrooms, whereas in our old space we only have the one central art room. The Arts House was previously located in the existing lecture hall uh, in room 103. The purpose of the lecture hall at Greenwood College School is to help bridge the gap between the learning environment here and the learning environment at post-secondary, whether it's college or university. The experience coming out of the, the Greenwood Lecture Hall was that it was not just that you're sitting with bigger numbers, but the style in which the class was taught. The funniest part is the fixed seats. The students took a long, it took a long time for them to get used to the fixed seats. They couldn't move around, they can't even swivel the whole way around. All that's wheeling around the room, it, uh, I don't know, it keeps you focused on the front. Because so much of first year especially is, is about learning outside of the classroom. Like there's all this, there's a whole bunch of academic pressure when you get there, but you have to get this work-life balance. I think that's what something Greenwood does exceptionally well in terms of preparation. I'm on the edge of a snowstorm and I'm heading for the yacht. And I know much of sailing, though I'm pretty good with knots. I'm the kind of guy who's always doing what he got. So I'm letting go of the wheel and I'm trusting in the keel. I'm dancing with my tank until I can hardly Greenwood Day is what will become our homecoming. The vision of it is that years from now there will be a weekend every year where our alumni events will occur, an opportunity for families to come back and, and celebrate uh, the beginning of the school year. Uh, it will be a chance for both present parents, past parents, alumni to come together under one umbrella and celebrate what is Greenwood. Uh, Rosedale Public School, which is one of our sort of feeder schools, uh, has uh, has an amazing steel pan band program. And I'd heard about it for years, and you know, thought it was a great opportunity because it was a bunch. It was a, a year when there was three or four of our kids playing in that band, so I wanted to get them back. 
like we do everything, we'll put our own twist on it. And uh, so this was our inaugural one this year, and it was a great success. Schools obviously have a responsibility to ensure a program that has strong academic content, academic content that will set students up to do well at the post-secondary level, but also beyond that to equip them with the skills that they need in life. People don't necessarily want to have the same classroom experience because it doesn't necessarily create the kind of person that's going to be perfect in the workforce. So creating this well-rounded individual who has these outdoor experiences, is good with technology, like all these things that are part of Greenwood's mission, just really make a complete individual, which is way more beneficial once you get to post-secondary and then even beyond into the workforce. To do that at Greenwood in a setting that is nurturing, that is intimate, and I think that's always been what sets us apart. The larger challenge, and in many ways the more interesting and more exciting challenge, is to really uh, continue where the school started, and that is to rethink some of the fundamental assumptions about education. <laughs>